how do you how do you get to whatever identity you want to get to? We um, we always want to be a physical offense. We want to be a smart offense, and we want to be a very skilled offense. I think those are the three things that we try to identify with as an offense each and every year. How about from an offensive line standpoint? Then it, 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 this, these are outsiders that we're talking. I mean, it didn't look like the offensive line was as physical as it needed to be last year. So how do you get to that point? Well, you continue to practice, you continue to recruit, you continue to work on your individual, um, you know, techniques and your skills and your communication. And, and uh, it's just an overall, it's a process with each position, not just offensive line, but any position on the football field. It's, uh, you know, goes from strength training to film study to your individual work to your nutrition to your rest I mean it's 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 uh, all encompassing it's a holistic approach and so it's something that we work on something our players are working on every day how would you say the quarterbacks progressed over the spring pretty well um, you know I think Sean had a tremendous spring I, I think uh, you know CV again he, he shows a lot of good traits uh, very Good with his footwork, um, puts the ball where it needs to be, has the right uh, arm strength uh, or, you know, the proper arm strength to get all the throws we need to get done in this offense. He can make all those throws. Um, he's locked in. I think he's more aware. He's, he's anticipating better. And I think you can say the same thing for the two young guys, you know, the, the, the progress that they've made. Um, it seems like they're on schedule and they continue to improve. And, you know, I think when you're a young guy and it's your first practice day one to day 15, you'll see more improvement, you know, from a growth standpoint, there's, there's more room for them to grow. So I think you see more jump as far as how much they, how far, how far they came along. On Christian, there's a lot of quarterbacks that maybe are on, on the whiteboard are really smart. But when it comes to the translation of the field, sometimes there's some struggle to do it under pressure, do it when there's a clock. Yeah. How do you simulate that? And how do you find out that kind of key ingredient the guy hasn't been in? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think how we practice here at Coach Franklin and how he sets up practice, putting our guys in really tough situations, we continually do that, uh, whether it be two minute, whether it be a four minute situation, um, putting the ball down, being you know in a third and short situation, third downs, pass under pressure. You're just trying to simulate, you know, the game and trying to put them in as many uncomfortable spots as you possibly can to try to get them used to that. But uh, with Christian, you know, the, the one thing that we do have is a sample of film to where, you know, there was a lot of, uh, uh, you know, influenza that week and he had to battle through a cold and then come and, and with, with limited practice reps perform well against the a Big Ten opponent, so you know at least we, we have found that out. So he likes the fire and he likes the live competition. That's one thing that we know that's for sure. James talked about an exercise that he had the staff do about short yardage and situational relative to the running game. Do you think you guys showed enough confidence in the running game last year? Um, I'm sorry. Give me your question again. Do you think you guys showed enough confidence in the run game? Are you talking about year? short yardage? Short yardage. I think general. there's a lot of room to grow. I've said that several times, and, and and I've been asked about last year several times, and I've addressed that several times. And we're we're about to embark on uh, summer training here and, and workouts and and. Uh, all camp and we're really focused on this year and working on improving. Can I ask it in a different way? Uh, previously, <laughs> sorry, previously you've used a lot of outside zone at other stops like Oklahoma State um, and last season it, it seemed like it was not as heavily used in your system. Is that a big deal? Is that not a big deal? Is that something that you're focusing on in this season to try and bring that into your offense? That's another great question. Um, if we were working on more schemes in a particular fashion, whether it be power schemes, pull schemes, um, mid zone, wing T, buck sweep, I wouldn't tell you what we're working on anyway. So <laughs> you can ask, but so I'm never going to tip question? my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, for, from a recruiting standpoint, how has it changed numbers wise recruiting quarterbacks 
with the transfer portal yeah. and the fact that guys seem yeah. to be so much more willing to, to jump from school to school. Yeah, I think it's very important that you're aware of the current circumstance of, of the transfer portal. However, we feel you know strong that it's really important for us to develop as well and to get them at an early age, at 18 years old, and to train them in your system um, is, is the best thing to do. Um, so that's what our focus has been on. It's not going to really change the way, you know, the thoroughness of how we scout and, you know, how, we, how far we cast the web and how thoroughly we, we look at guys and who we invite to camp. And those sorts of things are, are still extremely important. And we're going to work very diligently uh, and extremely hard at trying to uncover the best talent that's out there from a prospect standpoint. Um, the portal's alive and well, and, and it's it's one of those things that that doesn't stop either. Um, but it really hasn't changed how we approach scouting and evaluating and the amount of communication that it takes with prospects. Uh, that hasn't changed, but just the overall awareness that it does exist, I mean, it's, it's a factor, uh, it factors in. Um, but we would love to sign high school kids and continue to develop them in our system. Um, it's, it's not just football. It's not just the X's and O's. It's the strength and conditioning. If they can get with Chuck Losey for four to five years, that's, we know that's going to benefit. Um, if they can get in our culture and, and be leaders and grow as leaders and have the same messages and, and, the, and the same coaches coaching them year in and year out, that's going to benefit them. It's also going to benefit them from an educational standpoint, which is the most important thing. They get to graduate from Penn State. They can stay on schedule. They can learn from all of our professors here on campus and take the curriculum here at Penn State, which is tremendous. And it's a great opportunity to, to help them network and further their careers after graduation. So, you know, that's what we prefer. Um, is it perfect? No. Will it change? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. But we know ideally, in a perfect world, we want to recruit all of our kids from, from high schools and, and uh, develop them here. Does it impact the numbers, Mike? Mike, does it impact the numbers please. that you might want to bring in in a certain year, I guess, is another point that I wanted to get to. Well, like, last year we brought in two. Right. You know, so I think it's more about how many, how many quarterbacks you have on scholarship. And most of the teams that programs that I've been a part of, are somewhere around four to five, depending. Usually, that fluctuates with the with the tight ends that you have, four to five there, and, and the numbers, um, you know, are adjustable year in and year out based on need, experience, how many older guys you have in the room, what you anticipate losing due to graduation or NFL. Um, so all of those things factor in. You just mentioned lots of reasons why a kid would want to stay at Penn State once they're here. How about from a football opportunity standpoint? Because the portal's out there. Is there more pressure on you or James or anybody else to this this quarterback, this running back, this wide receiver? We need to give them a little more playing time. We need to give them more of an opportunity to make sure they're happy so that they will stay here. I think the most important thing is that you put the team first when it comes down to those decisions. Is is whatever you're doing trying to help the team win football games. I think you can get really caught up in a, in a web and, and, and get it can get very confusing on you mm -hmm. if you try to answer every question. The most important question is, are we helping ourselves win football games and win a Big Ten championship? Right, so you're trying to win a game on this Saturday right now, but if you don't play a certain kid and he leaves, is that going to help you win football games two, three years from now? Does, does that have to come into play at all? Just like I said, you know, is it helping our football team progress? Whatever decisions that you make, is it helping your football team to become the best football team it can be? And winning, winning on Saturday, winning down the all of those things come into fact. What are the tight ends? Um, what's the next step for that group that we all see clearly has a lot of talent, but there was a little bit of disconnect from the production standpoint last year. So where are they going to take the step forward to then realize all that? Well, I think they've done all the necessary work, and they're a very talented bunch. They're very hardworking. They're fun to be around. So I think that is just going to continue to progress. What would you say the ceiling for this receiver's room is, and can it be one of the best that you've had in your time as a coordinator in college football? I think so. I think they're a very talented group. Um, I think we have a really good blend of, of some veteran guys um, that we're really looking to pull the weight, but yet.
at, at the same time. Um, need to continue to lead and help our young guys out and, and bring those young guys along and be encouraging and positive. I think I think those are uh, very important aspects to that receiver's room. And, uh, you know, it's a good mix. It's a good blend, and, and there's some good depth there. Now, are there any receivers this year that remind you of guys you've had in the past, whether it be James Washington, just for example, or whoever? I don't like to get into comparisons too much. Um, you know, they, I was asked that last year about Dotson, and, you know, he, he was himself and unique in his own right, and, and so are all of these guys. You know, from a statistical standpoint or from a measurable standpoint, I think you could look at several of our receivers and make some comparisons just based on the raw data. But I don't like to get into that. I think the, the, the numbers and the times, all of those things speak for themselves, their heights, their weights, how fast they are. That's all documented stuff that you guys can look and crunch and try to figure out for yourself.